What's going on, everyone? So the New Orleans Pelicans, they are a very odd team, right? Because they had a stretch last year where they looked like they were the best team in the league. And they have a lot of talent on that roster. And they do have some quality depth. They have, you know, what is looking like he is becoming uh, one of the best perimeter defenders. You got a guy in Brandon Ingram who is just a mismatch and can just do so many things on the basketball court. Uh, You have Zion, who is one of the most efficient, most dynamic players in the league when healthy. You have CJ McCollum, who is like a perfect third option. You got, you know, like I said, Trey Murphy, who's really evolving into that legit two-way player. Herb Jones is another solid quality piece. Um, We'll see what guys like Dyson Daniels, Jose Alvarado, he's a guy that, you know, it can be really solid for this roster, but yet they just seem to underwhelm. Like this is a team that you could that either a they could be a top three four team in the Western Conference this year, or they're completely out of the playoffs. Like it's really odd, right? Like usually most teams you look at and you have like a real gauge on. It's like okay, well this this roster is going to be somewhere in the middle of the pack or. This roster has a real chance of coming out of, out of the West. You look at the Pelicans and you're like, on paper they look great. And they look like they could like really compete. Are they a real contender? I don't know. You know, depending on how good Zion is, maybe, but you know, it's just like could they be one of the better like could they be Sacramento of last year, right? Like a surprising team that's young that has a lot of promise, right? But it's just they also could just end up falling apart like they have every year and all of a sudden they're out of the playoffs again. It's just, it's really hard to gauge the Pelicans. But nonetheless, there was a recent report kind of ranking the big threes in the NBA. And one of the top five was the New Orleans Pelicans. They were actually number five, right? So the reason they were top five is because this ranking was based on just the overall net rating. Um, it was based on, you know, their, their combined plus minus as well as um, combined win shares, stuff like that, right? So basically all the metrics they took and the Pelicans were ranked fifth with their big three of McCollum, Brandon Ingram, Zion Williamson, right? Uh, although like that list to me kind of just didn't really make sense because, okay, you had Denver number one. Okay, that's cool. That makes sense. Uh, But then you had the Phoenix Suns, which we haven't even seen a full season with Kevin Durant. So you're using a lot of the metrics from the year where he wasn't on the Suns because it was the entirety of the season and kind of using his like plus minus win shares, stuff like that. But also like Phoenix, when they were undefeated with those two, they were also playing like tanking teams and like bench teams and stuff like that, right? Like it wasn't really a fair metric. And then also they included Bradley Beal, who like wasn't on the roster at all. And then the same thing with the Boston Celtics, who the Boston Celtics were a roster that they traded Marcus Smart and Porzingis, like you can't use his, because he just had a completely different role with the, um, you know, with the, the Washington Wizards, right? So you can't use his plus minus and win share stuff like that there with the Boston Celtics because he's going to have a completely different role. He's going to be a completely different position. Like, it's just, I don't know. It just doesn't make sense. Like, same thing with Bradley Beal. He's going from the number one option on the Wizards to the number three option on the Sun. So, like, it's going to be a completely different thing. And then the Lakers were next up with Austin Reeves, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis, where if they used, like, if they used the metric from when, like, they all started, then they should have been number two. So it's just like, I don't know, it just, it was a weird list. But nonetheless, like, I, this Pelican team was great, right? Like, when they were healthy, they were the ones, they were looking like they were the best team. Like, Zion is an absolute problem. Right, like he is just a ridiculous mismatch. You got Brandon Ingram on the other side. You got C.J. McCollum who could just really have an impact. You got a guy in Troy Murphy that can just, you know, be a legit two-way player. You got Valanciunas who, you know, is is a solid passer. Not the greatest defensive player in the world, but like they were really good defensively. When 
their big three of Zion, Brandon Ingram, and CJ McCollum were on the court together. They they had a defensive rating of 104. That's ridiculous, right? Like, that is insane. But the biggest problem is their two main guys can't stay healthy, especially their big franchise guy in Zion Williamson, right? Like, if they're fully healthy, I don't know if anyone would really be surprised that they come out of the Western Conference. Not just that, but Brandon Ingram is playing a big role on Team USA, and we have seen the impact that playing for Team USA and playing amongst a bunch of players that are, you know, as good as you, if not, you know, in in the vicinity, right? Like, we've seen what that leap these players take when they are on that roster and they're playing with the talent that they're playing, right? Because, you know, a guy like Brandon Ingram, who's really challenging him night in and night out during practice? Right, like the only person that you can make an argument comes close to him or maybe better than him is Zion. And so, like, yeah, Trey Murphy is a solid defensive guy, but he's not stopping and slowing down Brandon. Right, like he and it's like that's the problem. Like, there's no comparison talent wise to push him and make him better on a nightly basis. But when you play with Team USA and everybody is like the number one or number two guy, or like a really good quality piece that is highlighted on another roster. You know, think of like a, you know, Austin Reeves or a Josh Hart or, you know, like all of these guys are guys that can push Ingram on a nightly basis. You know, he's going up against Triple J practice after practice. He's going up against, you know, Anthony Edwards practice after practice, right? Like it's just, it's a different, environment and so to think that Brandon Ingram comes back from Team USA and kind of takes another leap I don't think is far-fetched problem is is can he stay healthy because I mean he's a legit 25 5 and 5 guy which is all-star you know superstar level numbers right talking 24.7 points 5.5 rebounds 5.8 assists a steal and almost a block a game. He he's he's been solid. He's not a uh, he does turn the ball. He's high usage. So you know, last year he struggled a little bit turning the ball over at three point three percent. But mostly for his career, he's basically a two and a half uh, turnover a game guy, which is fine. He has you know a fifty two point two percent EFG shoots fifty percent from two point range, so he's efficient and effective, and shoots almost forty percent from three. Right, like this is a legit. Three level score. He's got great size, great length, makes him an absolute mismatch. Uh, and you know, has like a seven three wingspan. Like he is a problem. But again, can he stay healthy? Because it seems like when they need him, he can't. He only played 45 games last year. The year before that, he played 55. The most he's played for his career is his rookie season with the Lakers, in which he played 79. Since then, it's been 59, 52, 62, 61, 55, and 45. It's not good. He's missing half the season every year. And don't even get me on Zion Williamson, right? Like, Zion has, like, transcending level, like, unstoppability. (laughs) I don't even think that's a word, but it is for him, right? He's still only 23 years old. This guy is just a freak when it comes to just his abilities. We've, we haven't really seen somebody to this level, right? And he's, you know, a 26, 7, and 5 guy. You're talking about, like, all of Fame level numbers at this point. But again, he can't stay healthy. The most he has ever played is 61 games his second season. His first season, he played 24 games. His third season, he did not play at all. Last year, he played 29 games. When he's on the court, he's a 60% field goal guy. He even shoots 37% from three, so he can shoot it outside. He shoots 62% from two-point range and has an EFG of 61.5. That's ridiculous. Like, he's transcending level talent. His rookie season, he was averaging 23 a game. Like, 23, 6, and 2. Like, this guy is a monster. 
and really is the difference maker for the Pelicans to be elite, right? Like, this guy has top five player in the league potential, right? But he can't stay on the floor. Like, he can't stay healthy. And at what point do the Pelicans even say, you know what, like, all right, it's time to start moving on, right? Because, I mean, look, there's even, there have already been talks heavily about the Pelicans looking to trade Brandon Ingram, right? Like, do they, if Zion can't stay healthy again this year, do they start looking to move him, right? Like, you almost have to at that point. The problem is, is you're not, like, if he can't stay healthy again, you're not going to be able to trade him. Right or if you do, you're gonna you're you're trading them for, you know, peanuts compared to what you could get if he could stay healthy. I almost feel, and this is just me personally, I actually think if Zion like if Zion plays say sixty, let's say he plays like sixty five games, say he's an all star, right? He's like twenty seven six and four, and just has a monster season. I would trade him. I would absolutely trade him. Because are you going to trust that he is going to be able to gain to season after season be that guy? Right? And I'm sure fans would look at it as like, what are you doing? We finally got Zion and look. Unless you like win the NBA championship or come out of the West or something. Right? Like if they come out of the West, then sure. But like, let's say, let's say he is. Ridiculous all-star level guy plays 65 games so he can meet all the requirements. He's and he's just dominant, right? And he and let's say they're like a second round exit. If I'm the Pelicans, I'm trading. Like if I'm David Griffin, I'm I'm trading Zion. Because his value might never be higher than that. Because if the following year he plays 29 games again, like you're screwed. But if he played like 65 games, and then is like super dominant and great, then teams are teams will probably sell the farm to go get him. And I think you'll never get more for him than that year. But that's just kind of my thoughts. Maybe I'll even make a video about that independently because I think that that's a good point. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass the question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. How do you feel about the Pelicans? Do you think that they deserve to be top five in uh, big threes? Do you think no? You know, stats are the stats, but, you know, we can't put them over, you know, like a Milwaukee or whatever. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. 